Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, I will talk about Le Chatelier's principle. I actually wanted to show another video first because um, he gives some really nice visuals in the background to kind of help you understand how changing concentration affects a system at equilibrium or changing temperature or changing pressure or volume. So let's watch that first. Um, and then we will check out some of these figures and diagrams and then work a problem together. Oh, Le Chatelier's principle. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Le Chatelier's principle says that if you induce a stress on a system at equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift so as to relieve that stress. So let's see some examples of a stress we could put on a system at equilibrium. First, we could modify the concentration of any of the compounds. Let's say we add some of this reactant. That will unbalance the equilibrium, and the forward reaction will speed up to use up some of the additional reactants, turn them into products, and restore equilibrium. The equilibrium is said to have shifted right. If we add more products, it would shift left. Likewise, if we selectively remove one of the components, the equilibrium will shift to produce more of that species to restore balance. That is one type of stress we could put on a system. Another stress would be to change the temperature. To see how this would affect an equilibrium, we have to see whether a given reaction is exothermic or endothermic. This tells us whether a reaction absorbs or releases energy and is signified by delta H, the change in enthalpy. If delta H is negative, the reaction is exothermic and releases energy. So we could think of heat energy as a product of this reaction. If instead it's positive, that means it's endothermic and energy must be absorbed for the reaction to go. So we could think of heat energy as a reactant in that scenario. Once we translate thermochemical data in this way, we can treat the word heat as just another substance involved in the reaction. Higher temperature means more heat, so things will shift to the other side to use up some excess heat and relieve the stress. Cooling it down would have the opposite effect. The third stress we can examine is changing the volume or pressure. Let's say the equilibrium involves gases in a balloon. What if we decrease the volume? If we remember Boyle's law, we know that the pressure will go up, since the smaller the volume, the more the particles will hit the sides and exert pressure. If there is a discrepancy in the number of moles of particles on either side of the equilibrium, it will shift towards the side with fewer particles so as to alleviate some of the additional pressure. In this equilibrium between a diatomic molecule and two monoatomic species, the right side has twice as many particles. So shifting left means atoms fusing together, resulting in fewer particles, which lowers the pressure on the container. If we increase the volume, thereby lowering the pressure, the equilibrium would shift towards the side with more particles in order to regain some of the lost pressure. Let's check comprehension. All right. So, Le Chatelier's principle is all about when a chemical system at equilibrium is disturbed. Or as Professor Dave put it, we add some stress to it, right? <laughs> so at equilibrium, it's just disturbed. The system shifts
in the direction that minimizes the disturbance. And I like how he had the the scale, you know, changing as you're adding more reactants or adding more products or taking them away. So that was a really nice visual. So yes, so when you're thinking about changing concentration, let's just review. And we're looking at the reaction of dinitrogen tetraoxide with nitrogen dioxide. If we were to add more of the nitrogen dioxide, then more collisions of these molecules would be taking place. That equilibrium is disturbed, and therefore the equilibrium must shift left, right? We have more of this. A lot of times I would use arrows when I was a student. I'd say, okay, this increases. That means the equilibrium needs to shift to the left. That was the visual that I always worked with. All right, so changing temperature, it's really important that you identify if your reaction is endothermic or exothermic, like Professor Dave said in his video. In this case here, the heat is a reactant, so is it exo or endo? It's definitely endothermic. So therefore, we would have heat as the reactant, right? And let's say we were to remove heat, then I would use an arrow going down on the reactant side, and therefore equilibrium has to shift towards that since it's getting less, right? To restore equilibrium, the equilibria has to shift left. All right, so changing pressure and volume go hand in hand, and for me, thinking in terms of a piston um, is like the easiest. You can also think in terms of a balloon, like Professor Dave showed. So. If we have a piston, we increase the pressure. What happens inside my container? The volume decreases, right? And therefore, there's a lot less space for the gas molecules to move around. So the reaction will shift towards the side with the fewer particles. And so in this case, we have one, two, three, four moles of gas reactant particles. And on the right side, we have two. So in this case, the equilibrium has to shift to the right so that they can have more space and um, restore that equilibrium. If we decrease the pressure, then we're increasing the volume. Now these gas particles have more space to move around, and so the opposite effect will take place. The reaction shifts to the left towards the side of more gas particles. Now just a couple of things that weren't mentioned in the video when we're thinking about Le Chatelier's principle and ways we can disturb um, our chemical equilibrium, and there's some things that won't change it. So we've talked about, in a previous lecture video, about adding a catalyst. What does a catalyst do again? It helps to lower the activation barrier, very good. Increases that, that speed of the reaction, but something to make note of is that it does not affect the equilibrium at all. Also, something else that would not um, change the equilibrium is let's say the moles of the particles of the gas are aqueous, because remember it's the gas or aqueous particles that affect equilibrium here and go into the equilibrium constant. Let's say they are the same on both sides. then changing the volume of our container does not affect the equilibrium either.
Also, just make sure when you're counting the number of moles, like I said, you're counting gas or aqueous, but you're not looking at solids or liquids, okay? All right, so let's just do a practice problem together. We see we have this chemical reaction um, at equilibrium, and we wanna do some different disturbances or stresses to our reaction and see how it, and predict how it would respond to restore dynamic equilibrium. So let's say hypothetically we have nitrogen monoxide is added to the reaction mixture. So I would say, okay, here's an up arrow. Does the equilibrium shift to left or shift right? It would have to shift left, good. What if we were to add more of that reactant? So if we added more of this, it would shift, excellent, to the right. Let's say bromine is removed from the reaction mixture. It would shift. To the right, fantastic. What would happen if we raise the temperature of the reaction mixture? This is exothermic, so heat energy is treated like a product. You raise it, it shifts to the excellent to the left. What would happen if you were to add a catalyst? No change. And what would happen if you lowered the volume? If you lowered the volume, it shifts to the side where the fewer uh, moles, and here we have two, and on the product side we have three. So it would shift to the Fantastic. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.